What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Daily Refinement. I'm Chris. I'm going to be giving you guys um, three tips today. And also, I want to ask you guys out there what your reselling ratio is. I want to know how do you guys divide up your time? Are you doing mostly Amazon, mostly eBay, mostly Poshmark, a mix of both? What do you guys think? One of the reasons why I moved away from 10K on the Bay is I feel a little bit um, unsafe only doing one platform. So I definitely wanted to reach out and do a few more platforms just to get an idea of what I want to do. Um, so one of the reasons, or the main reason is, is I just no longer feel safe just doing one platform. Um, that being said, I, I want to give you guys a caveat. You should just focus on one platform until you get the hang of it, until you're getting some traction before you move on to any other platform. I learned that early on. That being said, um, one of the ways you can improve your systems is to start selling on another platform and look at the way they negotiate their different um, negotiate their different deals, how they structure their platform, what selling tools they have, what marketing tools they have. I get all those um, different methodologies and I put them into the same platform. So for me, my um, efforts on eBay and Poshmark are actually identical. So for me, the goal is to list 250 to 500 items a week on eBay and Poshmark. Um, every single week forever. That's gonna be part of my ratio, depending on what I can find. 250 to 500 is the ratio I'd like to get to right now. I've been doing 250 a week for nine straight weeks, so it's awesome. I'm moving everything into my public store and I'm going to be doing um, a little bit of marketing. I'm gonna drive some traffic um, through my Instagram and through, I, I don't I actually don't like Facebook, so maybe not Facebook, but drive some marketing through daily or um, the Daily Refinement Instagram to get people to shop. And um, so I wanna give you guys three tips that I'm implementing right now, and hopefully they will help you. And then um, after those three, sorry, I'm saying I'm a lot today. Three tips, and then I'll get into asking you guys what your ratio is. So if you're listening, please put in the, in the chat what ratio you guys are doing. How, what percentage eBay, what percentage Poshmark, what percentage Amazon, how are you guys doing it? So the first tip that I have is I moved a three-inch tape. So if you guys don't know what three-inch tape is, the reason I did that um, is so that I can just use one roll of tape on the seam and save time. Um, I am selling a lot more on Amazon now. Um, my reselling portfolio I would like to be equal eBay, Poshmark, Amazon. Um, I actually think I can make three six-figure incomes. Sounds a little bit crazy, but um, right now on eBay, I'm doing around three grand a week profit, but that's through my other store, my main store. So as I move everything from my non-public store to my public store, you guys will see that store is growing 250 items a week and they'll grow that way into at least 5,000 items. Um, Poshmark as well. They're, the only things I, I sell on um, eBay that are not on Poshmark is hard goods. And hopefully um, they will move to allowing home goods because I think like I'd love to sell Radon and household goods on Poshmark to go with my lifestyle brand. I think that's a really good way to do it. What's up, Jenna? Thanks for stopping by. So um, three inch tape is the first tip because now you only need to use one strip of tape versus multiple um, on those shipments to Amazon. You want to make sure that you're at the right spot. Um, also, um, I am now going to 10 stores per day. What's up, Mary? A little bit crazy, but 10 stores a day and I'm looking for minimum $20 profit or more. Like today I found these disco ball Nike dunks. I think that they're super cool. Very rare. These are from 2013, very shiny size six, if you guys want to buy them. Um, but you know, I'm looking, you know, I'm going to 10 stores per day and I'm picking up items that are $20 profit or more. So I'm looking for 50 items per, um, I'm sorry, 50 stores and 100 items per week. Ideally two items per store that are at least $20 profit. So today um, on the way back from the post office, I got these affliction jeans, right? Super nice. So I have these affliction jeans and also the um, metallic dunks. And at the, at the thrift stores that I go to, uh, most of them hold shoes for me, at least the ones that recognize me. So um, going to 10 a day, what's up, Sam? And I'm doing, um, this is a little bit weird, but I'm, I'm weird like that. And I'm just going to share with you guys that I am doing, um, I have a checklist with how I treat people at the thrift store. So the first thing is smile. So cheese, make sure that they can see that I'm having a good day, right? So the good juju, try to transfer my energy into them. First thing. And the second thing I'm going to do is ask them how they're doing. So I'm like, what's going on? How are you guys doing? 
how's your day? You know, or do customers suck today? I'm going to try to get the conversation going. And then I'm going to ask for a nice guy discount. Uh, I'm going to do that at the, um, at the register. And before I ask for a deal, I don't know if you guys do the same thing for me. Before I ask for a deal, I always buy something. So if I'm in a garage sale, estate sale, Goodwill, whatever, before I go crazy, I always ask for a discount. So today I actually found um, like 10 pairs of AG jeans, um, a bunch of seven for man, seven for all mankind, the A-frame ones, and but they were 11 bucks. It's not, that's not my favorite price to pay for jeans, but that's what jeans are going for in the Bay Area. And that's very expensive. So I would... Wanted to get a deal on them, but um, I didn't want to walk up to the register and then just like crush them with, uh, you know, asking for a deal. Plus, at the Goodwills here, there's always a long line, so like they don't need you to, they don't need you to get business here. The Goodwill that's near my place is actually a three thousand dollar daily goal for sales, so that's no joke. That's that's crazy. What's up, Dan? I need to still send out your Disney shipment. I'm going to be start, starting to do a few wholesale shipments for things that don't match my $20 profit margin. So like there is a lot of Disney stuff that I found at estate sales and garage sales that I'm going to send to Dan so that he can flip it. Um, it's not, And those are $20 profit items. It's just I don't, I don't know how to sell Disneyana, which I think is that category. So I'm going to send it to him. Um, I need to figure out exactly what I want to do with those wholesale boxes because I don't need to make money on them. I just want them to get out so that I can have more room for the stuff I like to sell, um, which is clothing and hard goods, rare pieces, vintage. That's the stuff that I like to do. Um, so I actually have a checklist. So I make sure that I smile. I ask them how they're doing. I ask for the nice guy discount and I buy something before I ask for a deal. And today I asked, can I get a deal on the jeans? Um, can I get a deal if I buy more than one jean? And they said, no, um, they do not want to give me a discount no matter how many pairs of jeans I bought. So anyway, in that case, I just passed. I don't want to pay $11 for jeans unless they're going to be super bomb. And these affliction jeans amazingly were half off today. So um, here in my area, the Goodwills have the 50% off of one color every single time. And uh, it's crazy. So my brother's dog is actually still a puppy i think red poodles are very expensive from what i have seen and hard to find i don't know sam is a pretty cool dog he's got a very nice personality although he does not like posh hanger so i don't know what the deal is like um like i was i went to sushi and sam was with me and he does not like the posh hanger i do not know why or mary so that, that you know he's very particular maybe he felt threatened i'm not sure why um so here we go. Nathan is saying he's 100% eBay, but in Australia, they don't have Poshmark or any other legitimate options. They just started with Amazon. So in Australia, I would jump on that. Um, Australia has a weird shipping system, in case you guys don't know. the um, They have like a, a staggered st shipping rate, like under five pounds is a certain amount, over five pounds is a certain amount. So I would sell boots. If I lived in Australia, I would sell stuff that's heavier towards the five pound rate. So that it works okay um, but again amazon just started there i would diversify a little bit and here's the thing i'm not saying divide your time equally because that's not going to work i'm just saying learn how to sell something on one platform so that you can use that information to sell on your own platform for example i wanted to sell something on um, depop just to figure out the system how are they doing it how is it easy to organize things i really like that the way that you start selling on those platforms Poshmark and um, Depop is you actually start with the photos. Um, and I think that's a great way to set it up because you take the, you snap the photos and it saves it to your camera roll, which is fantastic. And you can just go through it quickly and list. And I think that it's really unfortunate that eBay, my original love, does not have a system set up like that. It's very difficult to work with. Uh, Bernie's bootlegs, thank you for two bucks. Um, Roseanne, what's going on? She says she spent a ton at Goodwill and the staff knows them, but they never give you a discount. That's challenging. For me, I usually get a deal. Um, those those um, Doc Martin Oxbloods I got for half off, for so for 15 bucks. When you say you spent a lot at Goodwill, how much is that? Because I, I feel like I've spent tens of thousands of dollars at, at Goodwill. So depending on how much you have spent, I think definitely they know you more. Uh, they like to go... Um, I don't want to say seniority because I'm not I'm not in the higher ranks of the people at Goodwill. There's a lot of people who buy a lot more stuff than me. The way the clerks look at you, um, 
they know you and like you because they haven't been organized. Oh, that's true. If you actually help out um, with uh, the, the Goodwills in my area are all understaffed. Um, they don't have enough people working there, so it's always a mess. If you were to help them clean up or you put things back, they're going to like you more than if you're the guy that goes through all the racks and leaves it a huge mess. If I was working there, I'm not getting paid on commission. I would never help you or give you a deal if you made a mess. Let's see. You hook the Goodwill staff up with donuts. That's a great idea. Um, I do like doing that. It's so sad that eBay's program is so outdated. It's true. And I think that eBay, honestly, is dying the death of a thousand cuts. Uh, if you guys agree, please like the video on, on YouTube. Um, I just think that all these platforms, every single platform I use is so much easier than eBay. Um, and I think that that's good. I'm excited because um, a lot of people give up when, they, when they're on eBay. eBay still does twice the volume for me as Poshmark. There's just a lot more traffic still there. And plus, I like to sell more expensive stuff like um, blazers and I'm like selling, I'm finding some Eileen Fisher. There's an Eileen Fisher outlet here. And Eileen Fisher is an older demographic in my experience. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe young, young women like to buy Eileen Fisher, but that hasn't been the, um, I get a sense that the people who are buying Eileen Fisher from me are older, maybe not using Poshmark. So that being said, there's still a lot of traffic on there. Um, but the trendier stuff, like if I'm selling a sports coat that's Easter themed or more fun or vibrant, a young person would wear they are selling just fine on uh, Poshmark. Blacks, blues, browns, uh, more traditional colors sell better on eBay for me. This is why I think it's important to sell on Poshmark to get your eBay stronger if you're in the clothing uh, mark. But it just depends on what you're doing it, what you're using for. eBay is the OG. You can sell every single category on there. So it's great to have a really solid, strong eBay account. It's very, very, very important. Um, someone is saying Irene, Eileen Fisher all day on eBay. Great. So just for me, it's better there. Arcteryx does good on both platforms. Uh, Patagonia does well on both platforms. Um, you know, if you do, if you sell Patagonia, I'm sure it would sell well on Depop. It's just a hot brand. So whatever you're buying, whatever you're getting, that's important. Um, why does everyone think eBay is so hard to list? The reason is because if, if you've used other platforms, it's more difficult. Um, I, 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 I like eBay. But you can't have, there's no shipping policies on eBay drafts, which is annoying. So like most people I know use both their phone and their computer to do eBay. And that sucks. Why well, you should just be able to just do one. Um, now the transfer of photos, the easiest way to do it, in my opinion, is to plug in a memory card into your computer and list 100% from your computer. That's the fastest way. However, it's much easier to take fantastic photos on your phone, right? So the best workaround I have seen across the board is a Galaxy camera, right? But how many people in the chat have even heard of a Galaxy camera? No one, really, right? So it's like the Galaxy camera has similar functions to a, solid, or a, a Galaxy phone, right? So you're on there. You can adjust the, the white balance. As you guys can see, a lot of you have downloaded my uh, photo video um, that I send out if you guys email me. You can still email me at 10 on the bay at gmail.com. I haven't switched 100% over to daily refinement yet. Um, but email me at 10 on the bay at gmail.com with the password Ninja Panda if you want um, my photo video and I will send it to you. But anyway, my point is it's much easier to take a perfect white background photo on a phone because you can edit it right there before you take it. So there's no editing post production. And if there was a way to get it to transfer directly into the listing without having to plug it in, I know there's Dropbox and there's Google Photos but it's or iCloud, but it's not as fast as plugging in your memory stick and just dragging it into there. Um, I, I have a 10-foot cord from my phone into the, into the laptop, but unfortunately on iPhone, you cannot use it. Um, you can't use the iPhone as a hard drive for some reason. So I kind of wish that there was some kind of add-on so that you could build the listing on eBay and drag it from the iPhone directly in. I know it sounds dumb, but I just can't, I can't get it super, super clean. So I will figure out a way to do it eventually where you can drag the photos directly into the listing and that'll be fantastic. Um, Ink Frog is kind of cool, right? I was hoping maybe a third party program could use it and there, um, trying to get me to promote Inkfrog. I love Inkfrog because it's third-party access, right? You can give somebody else to do it for you, but I have not figured out an easy way to do the photos. They're like, all you have to do is drag it from the camera to Dropbox to 
ink fraud. And that for me is not easier. That's more complicated. Um, if you use a DSLR, like maybe, um, and I'm not sure, Dan, if you use a DSLR or not, your photos are going to be better, but it's much more difficult to take a pure white photo. For me, I can't do it. I have a thousand dollar camera that I don't use because it's easier on my phone to take a pure white background. And most people shop with their phone and you don't need a super high res um, camera normally, right? And I'm still using a six, um, a 6S Plus. So when I upgrade, it's going to be something a little bit better. But I just want you guys to know, continuously improve your, your, your day, your processes. This is why I switched my channel to Daily Refinement because um, I just want you guys to go to bed closer than you were the day before. Uh, I got to shout out Jordan Peterson. I really like this guy. He's a psychologist. He talks about how to improve your life, how to improve stuff. And he's like, as long as you don't get worse every day, you're getting better Then over time, you're going to be fine. Um, you should compare yourself, but not to other people. You should compare yourself today to the guy or the woman you were yesterday. Um, today, I listened to a podcast. You guys have to listen to this. It's unbelievable. Um, it's the lady who co-founded uh, Poshmark with Manish. I forgot her name. Is it Teresa's son? I can't remember what her name is, but she co-founded Poshmark. And she is so awesome. She was talking about how when she was negotiating with the post office for the, the rate, like originally Poshmark was almost going to get shut down um, because they um, weren't paying enough for shipping. Yeah, that's right. Tracy's son. Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Um, Tracy's son. She's super cool. And she was like, the post office showed up and was like, you owe us millions of dollars in underpaid postage. And she negotiated with the post office basically a flat one to five pound rate for six forty nine, dollars And I think it was actually five ninety nine dollars before, but it's six forty nine dollars now for shipping. And that is so badass that she was able to negotiate that with the post office directly. And eBay is 100 times bigger, like not even joking, 100 times larger, right? It is a gigantic, it's fortune, I think it's fortune 130 or something. eBay is a gigantic company. They were not able to negotiate uh, a deal like that with the post office. So Poshmark, this essentially tiny company, she just went in there and negotiated it after they showed up saying, you owe us millions of dollars and you guys need to pay it to us or just get shut down. And I think that it's pretty crazy because here in the Bay Area, I meet successful women who make a lot of money all the time. I think I wish that everyone in the middle of the country could spend some time on the coast and just meet women that make a ton of money because I think it's inspirational. Um, you also see women who have home, like they have kids and they run a company. Um, What's up, Buffalo Shark Reseller? Thank you for the $20 super chat. Uh, you volunteered to help a group of autistic kids um, at your goodwill. It's always good to get deals done. You just listed 60 plus LuLaRoe prices. Nice. Or 60 LuLaRoe pieces. I don't know how to sell LuLaRoe. I have a bunch of it that I will just put into some wholesale boxes and send out. I really um, don't understand all the dress sizes and shapes and functions yet. But I will. Um, <clears throat> I love the dress game. It's fun. I think it's more interesting than guy stuff. Guy stuff is super easy. It's just like um, blazer, t-shirt, shoes, jeans, pants, dress shirts, button down. That's it. You can learn guy clothes. That's why girls crush guys clothing because they already know what looks good. And if they think it looks good, most I mean, on Poshmark especially, a lot of the stuff that I sell for men is being purchased by women. I don't know if you guys have that experience, but um, like if I'm, for example, Vineyard Vines, I sell a lot of Vineyard Vines um, to women, but I'm sure it's for their guy. Um, Jenna's asking, do I source RA in addition to the 100 thrift places? Yes. The 100 places I go to includes retail arbitrage. So um, Ross, Marshalls, Burlington, um, and I'm looking, you know, it's much more common for me to find a pair of shoes like this for 10 that I can sell for 50. This I'm going to ask actually 125 because it's super rare, but um, it's much easier for me to thrift a piece that I make $20 profit than retail arbitrage. Um, but retail arbitrage is super easy uh, because the items are brand new. There's no prep. And sometimes you find more than one. Uh, let's see. Someone's asking about kids, surreal. How do you make a lot on them? I can't make a lot on Kids Sorel. They suck for me. Also, Jenna, I'm looking into more uh, wholesale liquidation damaged goods. Um, I'll send you a site that I look at for wholesale deals. And I'm starting to buy more new because I have more money now. When I first started it like a year ago, I had to shop pretty much 100% at the bins. 
but because I have no capital restraint, no, I do have a capital restraint, but um, because I didn't take any money out of my eBay account for a whole year and now there's plenty of money in there for me to buy stuff. Um, so my budget per week right now is five grand. So I'm spending 5,000 per week and um, it's actually not enough to do what I want to do, which is, which requires like 20 K a, a week. So I'll get there. I'm, I'm not in a huge hurry. 10 K on the Bay requires 80 grand a month in new inventory. <sighs> that's a lot of money guys. So to spend 80, that's 20 grand a week. You know, and the only people I know spending that much money are buy ship repeat on Instagram. Those guys spend that much every week. Um, they can spend 10 grand a day. I'm not at that level. Um, I like the bins. Okay. Can't, don't get me wrong. It's just that, um, it's just, this is the analogy that I use for the goodwill bins, which is I, I got from professional bookies, which makes no sense, but they're saying the reason why people lose money gambling over, over time is not because they don't bet on the good games. So let's say for example, there's 20 games that night and they're betting, they know they've got an insider tip on one of them and they get it and they win. The problem is if you're a problem gambler, you bet on all 20 games and you all the winnings that you made on the one you lose in the other 19. That's what the Goodwill Bins is like for me. When I go there, the problem is I don't know which of the 20 items is going to be a home run. I've bought stuff for a dollar that I thought was going to sell for 40 and it never sold. And then I've discounted it a bunch of times, all the different times I've gone in there to discount it. And the problem is all the stuff that you pay a dollar for that you want to sell for 20 or 30 that you don't get 20 or 34 and then you end up discounting it to $2.99 plus shipping. It doesn't sell. And then you're like, what am I doing with my life? And then you return it and you donate it and try to get your five bucks back for your tax donation. That is what happened to me with the bins. So right now it's pretty easy for me. I figured out how to solve the bins. Just don't buy anything under 60 bucks. That sounds crazy, right? But it's not crazy. If you go to the Goodwill outlet and you only buy stuff under $60 or more in solds, you will never have a death pile again. Uh, but if you if you just let it slip a little bit to 40 or 30 or 20, then you're going to have so much inventory, you don't even know what to do with it. So don't do that. That's what my recommendation is. If you're going to go to the Goodwill outlet, just take a little bit, spend two more hours at the Goodwill outlet and find really expensive stuff instead of getting a bunch of stuff and spending all that time listing. Don't do that. Brittany, what's up? Um, Brittany is awesome. She was on my Patreon. She graduated. Now she's killing it. So she just, um, she is Brittany uh, GDC on Instagram. So everyone follow Brittany. Brittany, put your Instagram in, in the chat so people can follow you. She's killing it. She's a mom. She goes to the gym. She crushes it. She makes tons of money online. She like owns a bunch of homes. She's, she's in the position where she has more money than time. And that's where everyone in the chat right now you need to get to. You need to get to the point where you have more money than time so you can start buying time. And this is the weirdest thing ever because like for me, you know, girl, I mean, I, I grew up just fine. Like I didn't have a, a poor childhood. I wasn't rich, but just grew up middle class. But for me to spend $10 on a meal to like save time still feels weird to me, even though it's not worth my time to make my own meal. Most of the day I'm making a hundred bucks an hour at least. And, um, it's never worth it for me to cook unless like I enjoy cooking or I make a, a batch meal. It's tough to do that. So the rich people uh, buy time, poor people save money. That's really challenging. So like um, I've had a bunch of people recently say that I need to upgrade my mentality from $100 an hour to, to something else like $200 an hour, or $400 an hour. And the average millionaire, 500,000 people last year in 2017 made $1 million or more. 500,000 people. And in the entire history that Mount Everest has existed, which is a long time, right? Only 4,000 people have climbed Mount Everest. And yet last year, 500,000 people in the US made $1 million or more. Okay, that's it's easier to make a million dollars a year than to climb Mount Everest. So hopefully that's inspiring to you guys. I watch a lot of value, value attainment um, because I'm trying to watch. This is a little bit weird and I don't, and it might make all of you stop watching me right now, but. You're supposed to follow people that you want to that you want to emulate and you want to be like. So I'm watching Valuetainment right now because the guy that runs it, it's like a multimillionaire, very smart, very cool. And the mentality of like, once if you've made it in life, build a bigger table, don't build a bigger fence. So like, get to the point where um, you can help others succeed instead of just building a higher fence so people can't get there. Right. So I'm definitely motivated by him to do more. But he was saying. 
that all you have to do is break it down. And I broke it down and you have to make 400 bucks an hour and work 50 hours a week to make a million dollars a year. So that's not that inconceivable because most of the hours of the day, including this hour that I'm on YouTube, I'm making more than a hundred dollars an hour, right? So I have to get to $400 an hour. Oh, so the, um, Dan, the account is called uh, value tainment. So, um, I'm at about a hundred bucks an hour all day. So on a good day, eight hours, I'll make 800 bucks, right? That's, that's where I'm at right now. Um, Actually, let me see, 50. No, it's more than that. So 50 a day at $20 profit is $1,000 just in my eBay store. But I've only been doing that for nine weeks. So once I get to the point where I'm at 12 to 16 weeks of doing that 50 listings a day at $20 profit, um, I'll be really close to $800 a day net after all that time because I'm only doing it five days a week. And we're So $400 an hour is kind of crazy to me because unless you're a surgeon, most people don't make 400 bucks an hour. And that's not even really solo. Like the entire hospital is built for you to make $400 an hour or more. Actually, they make, I think they make over a thousand dollars an hour, but it's tough to be in that position if you work, but it's not tough to be in that position. If you own a company, you can literally own four noodle shops, four bagel shops, not noodle shops, four bagel shops and make a million dollars a year if they all do decent revenue, right? And that's just an average guy. You would never have heard of this person. They just own four bagel shops in any town in America and they all crush it in the busy corporate area of that town. That's that. So figure out how you can make 400 bucks an hour and it usually requires building a team. So if you are a dick, no one's gonna work for you and it's not gonna work. So I say that because a lot of people reach out to me and say, no one wants to work for you. Maybe people don't want to work. Would you want to work for you? I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't have that issue where people don't want to work for me. I haven't had that. The, the, what I've had is the job I provided sucks. So they don't want to work for me. That's, that's possible. Like they're like, oh, this sucks. But I haven't had that experience because the reason that my, um, that people don't have an issue working for me is the job that they're doing is very clear. It's not like they they show up and they don't know what they're supposed to do. They show up and there's a, a checklist of things that they're supposed to do. And so this is this has totally changed my entire business, guys, is having a full-time lister. So let me give you guys the breakdown of what it looks like. He's expecting to get here to do 50 items listed on Poshmark and eBay. Or why is he even here? That's his goal. So today he actually left at one o'clock. He was able to get it done between 8.30 in the morning and one o'clock. Sometimes it takes him a little bit longer. And this is, he shows up at my house. There's 50 items ready. It's right next to the photo station. He takes all the photos. There's a comfortable couch right there. So he goes, he does 10 at a time, 10 photos, sits down on the couch, lists them on Poshmark and eBay, then does 10 more, does 10 more, does 10 more. Um, so he does 50 on both platforms for 20 bucks and he packages all the items and he puts them away. Um, so altogether, he's making about a hundred bucks a day in about six hours, but he can do it faster. He just chooses not to do that. So it's a hundred bucks. I'm paying him $2 per item. And the most he's ever done is 110. He did 110 in eight hours. A lot of it was multiples. Hold on one second. Whoa, sorry about that. So this is actually actually where I live. It's, I'm not renting a studio, so sometimes the door will ring. Um, so definitely, so 50 people will show up. If I lived somewhere other than the Bay Area, it would be a lot cheaper because um, he's trying to make 20 bucks an hour when he's working, but he's not working that hard. Honestly, James is my photographer. You guys know, probably seen him in a couple of videos. He's very nice. He's very relaxed. Um, he could definitely... Um, have a special brownie, watch a movie, and still get his work done, right? It's not super hard for him. Also, I'm paying him PayPal friends and family. So I have a record for it on PayPal, and I'm using my PayPal debit card to make a lot of the purchases that I have. And when I'm buying wholesale, I'm using that. So most, I would say 90% of my purchases are on my PayPal debit card. That has tremendously simplified my business too. That's not on my three tips for today, which you, if you guys showed up late, the three tips I have today are um, going to 10 stores a day, 
I'm doing a three inch eBay tape, especially for Amazon. So I'm just doing one strip down. Um, my ratio is about 50%. I want to do, I'm sorry, one third eBay, one third Poshmark, one third Amazon. So if you guys are just coming into the chat, please put in there what your ratio, what you want it to be. For me, I want to make six figures on three platforms. So um, if you guys look at it, Amazon, eBay, Poshmark, all three of them, I'd like to net $10,000 per month. That way, in case one of them or two of them blows up, I'm still good. Plus, I like the challenge of trying to get there. Um, and YouTube, Patreon also make me money. So if you guys know, I'm right now I'm kind of diversifying my time uh, for with five different ones. Uh, let's see. What's the secret for non-U.S. citizens? You may have to do drop shipping. So, you know, a lot of people say that drop shipping is against eBay policy. It's not against eBay policy. Like if I recorded the call, everything is legal on eBay except for doing a bad job. Um, do you see myself doing private label on Amazon in the future? Yes. My goal is to do one private label this year. Not necessarily do it well. And this is, I think, you guys need to have a um, this, this hurdle um, of trying to do things well. I do not have that problem. I'm totally fine being an ass sucking at it, releasing some BS that no one's going to buy because then no, the first time it's going to be horrible, right? No matter what you do, embrace the suck. You're going to be horrible at it. I was, I've only been on Poshmark for three months. The first three weeks I sold like one thing. Now I sell eight a day, right? Didn't take that long. I just go in there, improve it every single day. At the beginning, I couldn't figure out how to sell jeans to save my life. I posted 50 jeans, the maximum profit. I mean, I got somebody offered me $7 and I accepted it so fast. It was like, boom, accepted. Because I was not able to sign. They couldn't figure out how to do it. Now I realize that you have to sell stuff on trend, um, converting all 150 pairs of vintage Levi's that I bought in the cutoffs. Um, I didn't know how to do. I didn't know what angle to cut of that. So I, I did some homework. I bought some. So now I get an idea. Uh, but you know, I've also moved away from jeans because some of the jeans I did sell also came back. Um, Dan is asking, do I sell a certain amount of items a day on Amazon? Not yet. Right now I'm just sending in 50 items per week so I can get the muscle of building stuff in. I also joined Side Hustle Pro's um, VIP group because Chaz is awesome and he did me a favor by coming into my Patreon mastermind group and t teaching people how to start FBA. So I thought I might as well support Chaz, get in there. I should get in on his fitness thing too so that... I can be ripped by eBay open. So hopefully you guys are all going to eBay open. Let me know in the chat if you guys are coming to eBay open, but I want to be ripped by eBay open. So the way that I'm doing that is I'm just eating, uh, just doing intermittent fasting. Um, so intermittent fasting twice a day, I'm eating gigantic meals because I don't, I either eat a lot or I don't eat. And I really like the system. Eating small meals doesn't do it for me. It's just easier. I don't know. There's a lot of people who hate intermittent fasting just working for me. Uh, let's see here. What is the key to listing fast special brownies and smoking crack? That's what someone put on my listing. He put step one, hit the crack pipe. Step two, list a hundred items. So, but that's mostly true. Uh, side hustle pros is on YouTube. Yes. Uh, you're fasting one meal a day, man. I cannot do that. Um, I was going to get eBay, a uh, hustle house for eBay, but I think that we're just going to get a suite so you guys can come hang out with us if you want to. And I want to do an event on Friday morning, not a crazy event like Kansas city reseller fam is awesome, but trying to do something that big is, is very time consuming. So I'm thinking about doing an event at, um, uh, let's say blind center of Nevada and they have a seven figure eBay store. So don't listen to me. Let's go to a seven figure eBay store and see. And I was going to, I'm going to actually get, um, eBay to hook me up with a meeting with E4 city. I don't know if you guys know them. They have 4 million unique feedback on eBay. 4 million people in the U.S. have bought something from them. It's pretty amazing. So I want to go visit that store and, and check it out. Uh, let's see. If you have any questions on joining any of my groups, you can still email me at 10kandabay at gmail.com. My inner circle is just 100 people. Um, and then we talk about Poshmark, FBA, private label. We talk about everything because I think that you should be aware of everything and do one or two things or just one. You don't need to do everything. Uh, just do a small amount really, really well and you'll be fine. But I think that doing other platforms helps you do certain platforms better. Where do you get cheap things? Um, I have a ton of videos on sourcing. Let's see, is the Masterman with Chaz still available on my Patreon? It's on YouTube. 
I actually put it for free for everyone because it was so valuable. I decided to just make it free. So you guys can check it out. Uh, it's like um, private label mastermind or something. It was earlier last week on Thursday. I posted it. Can you do, can you do drop shipping on Poshmark or Mercari? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I changed it. So it's patreon.com slash daily refinement now because 10 key on the bay is dead. So, um, yeah, it's patreon.com slash daily refinement is my new Patreon account. There's about 70 people out of the hundred. Um, so you guys can see there too, that, um, Patreon is, is also going to make me six figures. So is YouTube. So that's going to be $500,000 a year incomes, um, for a total of a 500 K eventually, um, is my video on how I take my pictures on YouTube. It is not, you have to email me, um, and start a relationship with me. So I'm using that too. So like you send me an email, tell me about yourself and something cool about you. And I will send you a video on how to take photos faster. I could just make it free for people, but I don't have any other tools right now since I'm not really, I have a course with prints, but like that's more for people who have no idea with reselling. Um, can you, I don't think you can do drop shipping on Poshmark or Mercari. A lot of people ask that. I don't know how you would do that uh, because you have to, sh they give you the label so I guess you could, I mean, I think it's against Poshmark policy, but you would have to download the video and email it to whoever is sending the thing because you're not allowed to use somebody else's shipping. Um, let me see here. Let me put it in the chat real quick. Also, if you guys want to be on the show, send me an email and let me know. Um, what you want to talk about and let's do it like for example we just had raquel on the show a couple of days ago and she wanted to talk about setting goals for ebay and poshmark so we walked through setting up her day like what how much money does she have what, what kind of stuff does she want to sell what's her route where does she live she happens to live in la which makes it really easy because every single thrift store has gucci in it so move to la if you guys are not able to find stuff uh let's see but again, I just want to know what everyone's ratio is. Let me scroll back up and take a look at what people were saying. A lot of 100% eBay. Uh, oh, let's see, Brittany, send me a super chat. 10% um, eBay, 90% Amazon. A lot of people do that ratio, including Hustle at Home Mom. Hustle at Home Mom's ideal eBay store is no eBay store. So you guys can work your way towards that also. Uh, it's funny because when she came to Kansas City, um, after she was hanging out with us, she was saying she was actually motivated to restart her um, eBay account after she met all these people who love eBay because she was like, I love eBay. I love finding stuff at garage sales and flipping it, especially if they're pre-owned because they don't sell well. Which do you think sells better? Uh, flat lays on white backdrop on a hanger against the wall hung up. So in my opinion, um, what sells the best on eBay or Poshmark is professional. So it doesn't matter. It just needs to be professional. So um, Google image search needs a white background to rank better. So that's why I use a white background. Um, does it increase returns? Yes. So if you have a white background, your photos look nice, you're going to have higher returns because in, in real life, the items do not look as good as in my photos. So that's why I like to have my cover photo overexposed <clears throat> to get that perfect white. And then the rest of the photos are just normal lighting. That way people can see what looks like in normal lights. So I don't have as many returns. In the normal light, the item looks l worse than it is in person. And with the professional lighting, it looks better than in person. So you guys can do whatever you like. Wow, 98% Poshmark, 2% eBay. Wow, that's crazy. So I'm just thinking you might as well do both because it doesn't take that too long. Um, it doesn't take too long. Olivia just bought a bunch of jeans for me to do some cutoffs as well. 50% uh, eBay, 40% Poshmark, 10% Amazon, 75% Poshmark, 25% eBay. Whoa, you live an hour from LA, you do 100% eBay. Everyone in LA sells only Gucci or higher. I get it. You know, you guys are in the posh area. Um, you don't have to rub it in. What's my return rate on Poshmark? It is three out of 211 sales so far. I have three returns. So that's on uh, like 1%. And um, on eBay, it's around 4%. Poshmark returns policy is the best. Yes, uh, I have only, I have three returns. One did not qualify for a Poshmark return and I did it. And the other one, one of the zippers was broken. 
Uh, and the other one I accidentally listed as women's and it was men's. So not too many returns uh, on Poshmark, hardly any. Um, do I primarily buy wholesale? Kind of. I'd say half. Um, just do 10k on the bay at gmail.com for right now. It's going to switch to Chris Daily Refinement shortly. 92% Poshmark, 8% eBay. What's up, Ashley? Um, 60% eBay, 30% Shopify, 10% Amazon. That's great. Uh, I need a platform that I can easily cross post on Shopify. I want my own store too, even though it's only going to result in 5% of my sales or lower probably. Um, I just want it for SEO ranking because I find it really awesome that I can post something and it will show up on Google ranking for Poshmark and eBay. And both of them are mine. I love when people say I found it cheaper, but it was me on my other platform. That makes me feel awesome. You're in Pennsylvania. Awesome. Uh, 40% Depop. Yes, I just sold my first Depop item. Supreme, Supreme Fanny Pack. Poshmark is doing it right in terms of customer returns. I, I don't, I don't 100% agree with you. I think it should be a little bit easier for customers to return stuff. It shouldn't only be seller. It's too heavily weighted because because some people they have a legitimate reason to return it, they should be able to return it. Because what if that person is like, I don't want to sell, I don't want to buy things on Poshmark anymore because I got a messed up item and they wouldn't accept a return. So I kind of agree with you, but uh, I'm also pro buyer. 20, 28% Mercari, 1% Facebook, 70% eBay. Nice. Thinking of moving to Cali from New York City soon. Wow. Uh... There is a few people, I wouldn't move from New York City to here. It's just as expensive. Um, there's a few people in my group. There's a lady that has $117 sales price. She lives in New York. $117 sale price. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. So she sells three items a day and does $10,000 a month. That is sick. That is, that is an awesome business, but she's got the dress game down. Um. I could give you some sources for OA or RA, but that's not this video. I'll have to do it in another one. Um, can I recommend buying stuff on Alibaba? So you guys know that I've teamed up with Prince. Prince is wired by biz. He sells only replenishable products. He did $740,000 last year with 96 products, and he's on Gary Vee. So he has 96 items. That's it. Never does any listing. Um, does a couple grand a day in sales. But... It took him five years to do that. So like you don't just start, go on Alibaba and order something and then you make money. It doesn't work that way. You've got to order a bunch of stuff, figure out your niche, try to get your deals direct from the manufacturer to cut out all the middlemen. It takes some time. So like it's not that straightforward that you just go on AliExpress, order something and then put it on eBay and Amazon and you're done. It's not that easy. Uh, you didn't know I was selling on Amazon. A lot of people think that I'm actually a big FBA seller. That's why I have enough money to sell on eBay because nobody on eBay makes money. I kind of agree with that compared to the people I know on Amazon to make money. There's nobody on eBay making that kind of money. Have I tried Grailed? No, um, but I want to. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to sell more than just a few vintage pieces just to test it. I just I My gut feeling is they don't have the traffic like Poshmark or Mercari, but I want to try it. Do I think Poshmark is easier to navigate or eBay? Poshmark is easier to list. eBay is easier to buy, in my opinion. I think that eBay is still one of the best buying apps. It's not one of the best um, selling apps. It's the worst selling app, actually, of the ones that I use. Without question, the worst mobile app. Um, it's difficult to use. It takes so, I, I, I don't even know. It takes five times longer to list anything. And there's no templates. And they have all the data. It's very frustrating to me because eBay has the most tools and the worst app. So maybe that's because it's really hard to integrate. 100% posh. Your next, next month, your goal is to start eBay. Great. Um, does boutique new with tags sell well on eBay? That's a good thing. So 86% of eBay, according to eBay, is brand new with tags. And this is what they say. I don't know what you, how you guys feel about this, but you let me know in the chat if you agree or not. The reason why the used market is saturated on eBay is not because um, Nicole State and Rockstar Flipper and myself talked about selling clothes and now there's a million sellers. That's not actually the reason. The reason is because 
eBay is 86% new with tags. And the deals are so good with new that people don't buy used items. The actual percentage of used items is still tiny compared to new. But when you're buying a new item for 70% off, it's really hard to buy a used junky clothing that's photographed poorly in, the, in, in a dark room for five bucks less. You would rather just buy the brand new one. So I don't know how, what you guys think. I agree with that because if you look at the percentage of used items, it's not that high. Most people sell brand new stuff. Um, let's see. 90% eBay, 6% posh. How do you know it's 6% posh? It's such a small amount. Um, you're 75% non-reselling. Ooh, Cricket, what's up? Haven't talked to you in a long time. I think that's a great way to do it too. Like if you want to um, subsidize your income with reselling instead of making the entire thing, entire income on eBay, um, I mean, entire income on reselling, I would agree that you do that because um, I still have a Facebook marketing company that pays most of my bills. I used to pay all of my bills, but it doesn't anymore because I have been neglecting it. So you can't do, and I also have a rental car business. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm what they call all the time. I'm an all the time worker. There's part-time workers, full-time workers, and then all the time workers. I'm an all the time worker. Um, cricket started the Depop shop. Nice. Uh, let's see. What's the percentage new to use on Posh? I don't know. I would say Poshmark is mainly used. Um, people in the chat, maybe you guys know better than me. I do not know what the percentages of Poshmark, but Poshmark is like shooting fish in a barrel right now because I'm competing against people who have no idea what they're doing. Same thing on eBay. Both platforms are, are not that professional compared to Amazon. Uh, why do you say you can't make money on eBay and mostly Amazon people are making money? Because when I go to meetings with eBay, they're like, is there free food? Is there free coffee? Um, I can't afford, can the event be free? Can you buy, can you buy my bus ticket? And when I go to an Amazon event, it's like at a nice hotel, you know, people are, are drinking, they're dressed nice. You know, it's totally a different demographic of people, right? So when you're looking at the, the different, the different events, Amazon ASD has 10,000 people that go and the event is free and there's millions of dollars worth of stuff for sale. eBay doesn't have that. I don't have a, um, event that you can go buy stuff to sell on eBay, but Amazon has tons of them. And they have them in China too. You can go to the Canton Fair and find stuff to buy and resell on Amazon. And there's just the scale, not having to do anything except for buy the item and send it to Amazon is much easier than photographing it, listing it, selling it. And, you know, in a market that's not that strong, most people on eBay are buying new stuff. So if you're selling used stuff, it's very difficult to scale up, right? So I don't know. I just have had a, like, you know, I've had a lot of difficulty getting, um, eBay sellers to be able to invest in themselves because they're not making enough money to do anything. This is from what I have seen. That's what, another reason why I changed my channel to not just serve resellers. I want to serve regular people that already have a job and have some extra money so they can buy some inventory and make reselling work. If you have a very, very small amount of money, my recommendation is always get a job so that you have a little bit more money so that you can resell properly. It's very hard when you're living on your income because you can't build up any momentum. If you look at most people's stores, they never get above 20,000 listed, which means you have to panic and auction off a bunch of your stuff at the end of the month because you need that cash flow to pay your bills. But if you can be patient and grow your inventory to 50,000 or more, then you start killing it because you get 200 to $500 a day in sales. And most people, unless you're douchey or extravagant, you can live on that income. What's up? What's up, Bravo? Um, I don't know what to do with my Facebook marketing company. It just I feel like explaining to somebody how to do it would would suck. I'm just I'm just not passionate about Facebook. It's such a problem right now. It, it's it's really sad because it's like it's biting the hand that feeds. Facebook allowed me to pay my bills so I can work on all this stuff, but I just don't like it. It's so negative. I just can't hang out on there. What types of items am I sourcing for Amazon? If I told you I had to kill you, um, let's see. I know people keep bundling and they don't buy anything. So what I like to do is I message those people. What would you like to do on their meet the posture instead of countering? Cause I don't know what they're doing. People will, will bundle a bunch of random things and I don't know what the purpose is. So I ask them what their purpose, what is your intent with what? And they'll say, my intent is I just want to save your closet 
Okay, great. There's no reason for me to send that person an offer. They're like, oh, I want a really good deal on 10 items. Okay, that's working out. Can you sell pre-owned on Amazon? In certain categories, you can. Um, do I have a YouTube video? I have 300 YouTube videos, my friend. Let's see. You picked up a four in Excel. Nice. Um, that he's talking about a Dymo, I'm assuming, for 175 on Amazon. That's a good idea. I, I print, I think I bought my, my Dymo for 170, 179 or something. So that's a good deal. No seller fees on Vinted. Uh, sold shoes for 50 bucks and got to keep it all. Awesome. That's, that's super dope. Uh, I don't know anything about Vinted. So there's a lot of sites that um, do stuff for free. And I hate those sites because I want people who make stuff to make money because then they can provide a better experience. I've never heard of Vinted, probably because they don't have any money to advertise. I'd rather, um, you know, Poshmark just came out with a TV commercial, I believe. So they must be doing well, which is great. I want them to make a lot of money. Best way to find new with tags for eBay, uh, retail arbitrage and Googling wholesale liquidation, um, auction sites, um, networking is the, is the biggest, is the easiest way. Am I going to start using a prep center? Not right now. Um, I will maybe use a, a prep center in the future if I design some private label right now. No. Uh, Ashley got her Dymo for 140 on Amazon. Awesome. But guys, I'm going to hop off. I've got a coaching call at 5 p.m. Not taking any more coaching clients. Sorry. If you want to join my mastermind, it's at patreon.com slash daily refinement. Everyone have a great day. I'll talk to you guys later.